Alrighty, so news of the week on this Wednesday afternoon, and today is definitely a big day in MLS in terms of broadcasting, because today is finally the day that MLS Season Pass has officially launched on Apple TV, and I'm not going to lie, I've only spent 30 minutes in terms of looking at it, and I'm just blown away in terms of some of the content that they produce. I mean, I had some low expectation of what kind of content that they were going to do, and that while there are definitely some content on there that I've seen it on the league website, they added so many more that I've never seen it before uh, from each team getting their club profile, from a uh, player profile that each team basically released, uh, from some classic playoff moments that we have seen before, uh, also some, some tradition that every single team has and explaining it to it. And then not to mention it also include all the MLS Cup uh, matches in the past and some classic playoff moment that, that we will never forget. And they also included some iconic player that have played in this league and explained their their legacy and their legendary status in terms of this league 27 year existence and that i mean all that content that they produce is something that you know i didn't expect they they would go that deep in into it but my i think think they have done an, not only just an excellent job in terms of it but just a great first impression of what this brand is because again there was a lot of uh cautious optimism and a lot of a lot of people that was questioning how is this go going to really be just kind of a watershed shed moment in the the league history in terms of the broadcast and you know i think there are still the verdict in terms of what's going to happen uh with some of these games that is broadcast and also uh the the pre and post game show and the whip around show and how that's going to look and we're going to find that out in a month time when the regular season begin but just today with them launching this and just produce so much content that i've never seen before that the league has done even on their youtube page uh it, it's something just incredible like it is it is almost kind of broad tier in my eye in terms of covering this league for the past couple of years and that i'm just hoping it's going to continue especially once we get into the regular season and once they start broadcasting this game because i think you know i know there are still some pessimistic things about the about apple t tv and uh or mls on apple tv and and mls on the season pass of what the broadcast is going to be look like but so far there is definitely some promise that it could be re really good and it's something that i think the league absolutely deserve especially also drawing some new fa fans into it i think the content that it, they produce is an excellent way to draw new fans in into this league and even supporting their their local team too so yeah uh if you haven't checked out before uh i believe it's 99 dollar per per season but if you are an existing apple tv plus member which by the way there's actually a loophole where you can you can sign up for apple tv plus and just pay for the 79 dollar i believe uh, apple tv does uh, offer a free trial and you basically just sign up to that free trial and then you can also sign up for mls for 79 nine dollar instead of paying the the full price and again you know with the content that they produce i think it's definitely worth every single little penny uh that you you get in terms uh, of either you're a new fan into mos and try to know what the league is all about or you're an existing fan like me for a long time and looking some of of the thing that that the league is all about now uh moving on in terms of the next news and now let's talk about some of the transfer rumors and signings and especially playing that is moving on to somewhere else because we definitely had a couple of big name players that is moving out to somewhere else and one of those players is chicho ronco and this is no surprise the fact that you know for a long time i think even going back to last year there's been rumors of chicho ronco potentially leaving lafc and still that kind of feels like it's mind boggling because you know he's been a guy that ha has been the answer for lafc in that number nine nine position and i would arguably say that he's probably the best number nine that lafc has has ever had and the fact that they decided to ha had rumors of cutting ties with him starting in the last summer trans window was just really kind kind of confusing and this would definitely make it even more confusing the fact that they decided to transfer him to pachuca down in liga mx and i'm not sure if lafc is playing pachuca in the league cup i mean if they're not playing pachuca in the league cup in in the the group stage they might be meet each other down the line but yeah i mean this is kind of shock shocking and again just something that 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 i just never understand why did lafc really want to sell chicharango i mean i have heard rumors suggesting that 
you know, Chicharongo have said that he's happy with LAFC, but then there's also some rumors saying that he's not happy with LAFC, and especially uh, LAFC is not willing to burn that that DP spot uh, in terms of uh, uh, of labeling Chicharongo in that spot, which that doesn't make any sense because, you know, you have a DP spot open. It's not like you don't have a DP spot open and you have no choice but to set him. But here, again, you know, this is a very very strange situation and in some way this is a really big loss for LAFC because you know I know LAFC have a lot of weapons on this team but I think last year Chicharanko was definitely one one of the more more uh important pieces especially in terms of the goal score in department I mean they lost a really big number nine that they've been searching for uh for a very long time I mean not since maybe uh Diamande uh, playing there as the number nine or maybe Rossi when he of course plays in that number nine position uh, that LAFC probably had a guy that can guarantee you to score 10 or 20, 20 plus goal a year so yeah again uh, this is definitely a very surprising move and the move that definitely downgrade LAFC in terms of the attack and also for a team that has aspiration of winning the CONCACAF Champions League again that just makes it even more confusing of why would you decide it to sell probably your your one of your best if not the best attacking talent uh and not to mention not just to sell him off to your to to some club i mean it's one thing to sell uh, a player to uh, another club or sell them off to europe for a profit but to sell them to a league at Keys club and a team that you maybe be playing a against them in the league cup or even in ccl uh well actually no not in ccl i don't think pachuca is in ccl this this season but yeah i mean this is a really surprising move and i can understand why a lot of lafc fans are not happy about this move uh but now moving on in terms of the next news is the san jose earthquakes yes the quakes finally did did a thing uh they signed carlos garezo on a dp contract and i think this is probably the the best kept secret because you know for a long time uh ever since i've talked about carlos garezo potentially coming back to mls and it seems like it was going to be one of the california team that was going to sign him well you know since there's only free california team in mls and i know the fact that we can rule out the la galaxy because you know they really don't need another defensive midfielder it was between him and or LAFC and especially uh, I thought there could be a case that LAFC might be the the team because you know with Jose Sifuentes potentially moving on to to another team in Europe and they sell them him off soon oh uh, they probably will have Carlos Carrezo as a replacement and that would be a great replacement now what I didn't expect is the fact that the Quakes were going to to be in on him and apparently I think it's a club record transfer fee that the Quakes of course decided to get Carlos Carrezo I think it was like somewhere about three million dollar which Again, that doesn't sound like a club record fee to this day, but you got to remember, this is the Quakes. This is a team that don't spend money and has the cheapest owner in the league. So, yeah, this is almost kind of like a hallelujah moment for the Quakes, and especially something that I think the Quakes desperately needed because when you look at this midfield, I mean, a couple of years ago, I said this midfield was the, the strength of this team, but it started to kind of become a bit of a weakness, especially last season with the likes of Jutsen really not performing uh, at a rate that he was a couple of years ago and also Jackson Yule also so started to suffer the same same fate that a lot of Quakes players suffer when they go to join the U.S. men's national team or even the the youth national team how they come back to just be a complete different player in a bad way so yeah I think get, getting Carlos Correzo and especially on a DP contract I mean I know some people don't like to see 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 a a defensive midfielder to be spent and on a DP contract, but knowing Carlos Correzo is a guy that, you know, doing his FC Dallas day, you know, he was definitely one of the best defensive midfielder, and I argue he's definitely top five up there in term, terms of the best defensive midfield in the league, and I think defensive midfield is also a position that I feel like people don't realize that you actually really need to have a good defensive midfielder, and that every good team in the league always want to have kind of the, the, the Diego Chara and the Jose Martinez kind kind of of players to really be a competitive team and i think for the quakes getting Carrezo, you know i think that could be the case i mean i'm not saying that he's going to be as good as uh martinez and and chara i mean you know those two guys are going to remain as the top two uh number six in this league but yeah i think this is a very good signing for the quakes and one of the rare time that i i think the quakes are are, are heading into it to the right direction because again i just have a lot of question about 
the, this team once again heading into this season and especially kind of for, for the whole season where they haven't really been active in the transfer for, for market, which I was hoping that they were going to do. Uh, but now they, they finally did something and that maybe changed my view in terms of my optimism of how the Quakes doing this season, even though, again, in terms of the Quakes, I tend to not have a lot of optimism because, you know, I'm not I'm not fooled by by this team. Team always trying to give me some optimism and then they crush it be, when the, the season and how the resort, of course, would turn out. But now moving on in the next news, we got Inter Miami signing a Ukrainian international defender, Serki, and I think it's Chris, Chris Tov, that's his last name. Again, Eastern European name, not easy to pronounce, and I'm definitely going to be butchering some some other names here too. But yeah, uh, this is a guy that I heard he could be be, be a good use, uh, especially for Inter Miami, where you know we knew that defense was one of the things that they desperately needed because I think if you look at the, the big weakness of last season, it's got to be the back, back line. I mean, the back line was not good for Inter Miami. And knowing the fact that this guy uh, was part of Shakhtar Donetsk uh, and also a guy that is a veteran pre present uh, with that, that team, uh, I think this is a good signing for Inter Miami and will instantly upgrade that, that back line that they had coming into this season. Now, uh, their interstate rival, uh, Orlando City, also made a move this offseason because that's that's what Orlando City likes to do. Like, if you want to talk about teams that have made a ton of moves this offseason, Orlando City has done a lot, lot of moves this offseason. And now they have acquired Icelandic international Dagger Dan uh, for Holson um, uh, recently. And that I think that's probably one of the most awesome names in, in MLS. I mean, Orlando City has had some some really good name. I think one of my favorite names is Sylvester Vanderwater, who unfortunately is no longer with Orlando City. But this is a good Good, um, good uh, second second uh, choice in terms of one of my favorite name in MOS. I mean, Icelandic name always tends to sound sound really awesome. And that, yeah, I think this is a good signing for Orlando City. I think he plays in the midfield and again gives more depth to this Orlando City team that already seems like they are reloaded and and a team that you know this coming season. You know, once again, expectation is going to be high for the Lions, especially the last two seasons. It seems like they have took a bit, bit of a step back after they finally made it to the playoffs for the first time in their club history a couple of years ago. Now, uh, Austin FC have loaned Musa Jite to AC Ajaccio. Uh, and, you know, this, of course, is, I think, think a, a move that, you know, I think Musa Jite kind of wants to do because he wants to be closer uh, with family. But knowing the fact that he's also a guy that, you know, I think for Musa Jite, he's. I know there's going to be some that have said that he's been kind of a disappointment because of the the way that you know he has a lot of raw potential to be a really good good player, uh, and he hasn't showcased that. Um, I I think, I think at, at times you know he has done some good good things for Austin FC, and I will never never uh, forget that that hat trick that he of course scored coming off the bench against RSL, and that yeah you know we'll see how he do, does uh, with this French club, and we'll see. Uh, whether if he can get more minutes because that's one of the things that he, he did struggle during his time with Austin FC and that is he didn't really get a lot of minutes most of the time when he did get minutes it's usually coming off the bench now uh, the New York Red Bulls sell Patrick Lamala to Israeli Premier League side uh, Hapro Beer Chevin now obviously with the ru recent rumor that they were going to sign a, a DP uh, striker from, from Belgium this was not a big surprise that you know what's going to happen to Patrick Klamala is he going to be still there but kind of become his second choice kind of number nine or the fact that they finally get, got got rid of his his bad contract and maybe selling off to another team and in this case this is probably the best case scenario for the Red Bulls uh, not only getting rid of this bad contract but also sell, selling him and and clear that one off the books because if you as any Red Bulls fan you know how frustrated that they are with P Patrick Klamala and that again he's clearly not the answer in terms of the, the number nine spot that they desperately uh, been looking for ever since BWP no longer is with this team. And that, yeah, again, unfortunately for Kalman, it just didn't quite work out in MLS. I mean, he did score a fair amount of, of goals during his short time with the Red Bulls, but definitely nowhere near a level that you can can say say that it's worth, worth the DP tag that he, he was carrying. Now, uh, there's a report suggesting that uh, Julian Araujo is set to join Barcelona on a permanent deal for $4 million. Now, originally, the original report, I think, from Tom Berger said it was supposed to be $3 million 
dollars and it was actually going to be a loan deal but now it seems like there is now re new report suggesting that this is going to be a a permanent deal oh by the way the three million there wasn't from tom Boger. i think it was from fabrizio R romano and then tom Boger basically said that uh it seems like the permanent deal it, or the the move is going to be now a permanent deal for four million dollar and they said that it seems like he's going to be joining barcelona b instead of the the senior team because again you know i, I don't think it would have make a lot of sense for him to join a team like Barcelona and expect to get any play minutes uh, if he joined the senior team. So, yeah, I think this is a good move. And especially, you know, uh, joining the, the second team of Barcelona isn't really the, the worst thing. At least he, of course, can get continue get get minutes. And who knows? He maybe even get to be be promoted uh, to the main team or even sell, sell off to uh, another another team. And that, you know, Araujo is definitely a, a guy that, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that he doesn't play for, for the U.S. men's national team because I was about to say that, you know, he could be a future in that fullback position for the U.S. men's national team. Then I forget that he's he currently plays for L3. But if you're an L3 fan, this is definitely good good news because, you know, why not have a, have, have a, uh, a player that he can definitely be be one of the the, the future, future uh, L3 fullback uh, for, for, for that national team. And that, yeah, you know, I'm certainly wish him the best in terms terms of how he plays because you know during his time with the galaxy you can definitely see there's a lot of upside to this kid and he he can definitely be a guy that could be be a decent player uh down the line now uh there is a report suggesting that brenner originally was rumored to be signed with nottingham forest but now there's new rumors suggesting that he actually is not going to be going to nottingham forest and that cincinnati and nottingham forest just could not reach an agreement and as much as i know that's kind of disappointing if you're Brenner because you know you get a chance to be going to the Premier League and get to to join not really a a, a I wouldn't say say uh a a, a uh, club that, that has done well so far in the Premier League I mean Nottingham Forest have just been been promoted and they're, they've been trying to to you know their, their goal this season obviously is trying not to get relegated back to the championship but it's definitely a a, a well-known club uh, especially in the english game and that again you know i think brenner would be a little bit disappointed especially you know i know that that for cincinnati they know brenner is definitely one of the guy that has a lot lot of potential for them to sell sell him off for a big amount of profit and i know it's probably going to be at least 15 million dollar because you know cincinnati is not going to sell brenner for less than 10 million dollars especially that's the amount that they paid paid him uh before but yeah, this is going to be interesting to see. You know, we're going to continue to hear the Brenner transfer saga. And that we'll, we'll see eventually will Cincinnati eventually move on from him. I mean, I mentioned it in the season preview. I think it's going to either be in the summer transfer window or maybe heading into the next winter transfer window. Now, uh, LAFC report to sign Polish midfielder Matus uh, Borskic from UD Ibiza. And again, if I completely butcher that name, I do apologize because, you know, Polish name is another 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 kind of type of name that it's kind of hard to to per pronounce well not all all polish names now some polish names are actually pretty easy to pronounce but yeah in this case you know i think this is more for for death in terms of the midfield and especially you know knowing the fact that lafc may be, be losing those those death in the midfield i, I think that they, they decided to, to think about about getting a player who, again, I don't know much about him other than the fact that he, of course, played with Leeds United. Because, of course, you know, it seems like there is that connection between Leeds and MOS and especially American player where Leeds United has basically become becoming the America's team in the Premier League with so many many American uh, player or former MOS player. And not to mention even an American head coach in Jesse Marsh uh, taking charge of that team. But, yeah, uh, we'll see, see whether this deal is going to be done and we'll see how good... He is going to be, but now moving on in the next news, uh, TFC is rumored to sign Norwegian defender Sigur uh, Rostedt from Bromby. Now, uh, speaking of con connection, it seems like Bromby and MLS have a strong connection with each other because there's been a lot of players that have come uh, from Bromby that have joined MLS. I think there's been one recently that I can't really come at the top of my head but i know one player that had used to play for bromby uh that turns out to be be a a huge success in mls and in fact it's the guy that just won the mvp this season in hani mukta who used to play uh for bromby but yeah i think this is definitely a good signing and especially again most bromby player has been been done well when they come to mls and especially you know toronto are, are trying to rebuild their back line and they're 
done a lot in terms of addressing that this off season. I think thing think this is a good thing and that it's it's something that they they were overdue to do so. I mean, I think they learned their mistake from last season of not even thinking about addressing the back line when that's been really the the, the major issue to this team to get themselves back to cup contender and that you know, from what I heard, he's he's a decent player, and that I, I think he's gonna be be a good upgrade in terms of this back line that is starting to shape up to be be decent heading into this season for TFC. Now, uh, FC Cincinnati is reported to finalize a loan deal to sign Colombian center back uh, Yesen Mascara from Wolverhampton Wanderers. So again, you know, this is not a big surprise because I mentioned before in the season preview, Cincinnati definitely needs some some help in the defensive of area and maybe load up some depth or in this case maybe get a get a, a player that could be a regular starter now i'm not sure if he was actually a regular starter with wolves this season in the premier league but certainly a, a guy that you know from what i heard could be a de decent player and that again because it's a loan deal there's not really a lot lot of risk in it i mean anytime when it's a loan deal it's a low risk high reward kind of situation and if this move does does go through then there could be a case that he could be thrust into the starting 11 speaking of defender because we're, we've been talking about defenders potentially coming to mos uh Atlanta united is also rumored to sign a defender and it's also by by a guy that has the last name that is mascara though uh no relation between uh both yes and mascara and Atlanta united rumor to to si sign uh edwin mascara so in fact that both of them are colombian uh but they are looking to sign him from independente de Me Medellin and again Atlanta United another team that I mentioned in the season preview definitely need some some help in the the de defense because they're a little bit short in terms of that that department and we'll see whether or not if this deal is is going to be done and again another defender that has some some good upside from what I heard and we'll see if this move does eventually go over the line now uh moving on in terms of the next news and now talk about news that is not re related to signings and all also transfer rumors that that has happened or players that is leaving MLS is Tulsa and Ricketts have announced retirement after 14 years of professional career and will be joining the Vancouver Whitecaps so for the second news of the week episode in a row I talked about a, a Vancouver Whitecaps player basically retired from 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 uh, his professional career and you know Tosa and Ricketts I'll tell you what I was actually surprised the fact that he was actually getting up to age I mean I I didn't think they that he was kind of getting up to to that that age and i remember during his time with tfc you can definitely see that during the time when tfc was at the the peak of their power in 2017 a lot of people say that they he has a lot of potential to do do good good things and especially scoring some big goals for tfc too now obviously it didn't quite work out because he kind of becoming a little bit of a journeyman kind of bounce around around the league but definitely a guy that will have some memorable moments in his career especially a guy that have have been able to win trophy two and will definitely be be a guy that will be remembered in Canada for 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 doing a lot of th things uh with both TFC and the Vancouver Whitecaps. Well, mostly for for TFC because uh, of some of the big goals that he've scored for for that team. So yeah, great to to see congratulations in term terms of toast Ricketts of an an amazing thing career. And again, just like Florian Youngworth, it seems like he's also going to be part of the Whitecaps coaching staff as it was announced. And then uh, Charlotte FC have announced that they decided to name their MLS Next Pro name as Crown Legacy FC. Now, I know there's actually a lot of people that, that have been ridiculed the fact that Charlotte decided to name their, their MLS Next Pro something interesting. Because I, I thought some people say that, you know, if you're just going to name your, your Next Pro team, just just name it Charlotte FC too. Just don't make it uh, fancy whatsoever. I highly disagree. I think, think I like when teams decide to be a little bit creative. I mean, yes, I know uh, when you decide to to name name a a reserve team, you don't want to kind of name some some something just just uh, unique and stuff like that because it's just a, your your reserve team and so forth. But here, I I do like it, and especially Crown Legacy FC. I mean, I just had a feeling that that would have been a perfect name because of what Shard FC basically represent then and and the theme of of their their team, and not to mention. Chen, you know, you know, this would be a good team to, to join when you're basically joining a reserve team that could potentially maybe get a chance to play for the main team too or play somewhere else. And that again, I, I don't mind teams that that maybe a reserve team or even lower league teams to have a, a creative name because at the end of the day, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'd rather have team 
teams continue to create some some uh, interesting names uh, as their team name instead of just going with a boring FC and C and City or e even those European generic names that we've seen too many times happening in the league uh, uh, with a lot of these expansion teams in the past couple of years. But there you have it. That is pretty much it for the news of the week for, for this episode. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news. And as always, if there's any news I didn't mention here on the board, let me know in the comments below. But until then, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.